On their first full day in Britain, Nikolai Bulganin and Nikita Khrushchev drive from their hotel to the cenotaph in Whitehall, where they lay a wreath of white lilies and red roses with laurel leaves. The wreath is dedicated to the eternal memory of the gallant warriors of Great Britain who, together with the gallant warriors of our country, gave their lives during the First and Second World Wars in the common struggle for the peace and the security of nations. This wording causes some surprise by including the First World War, which the Russians regard as imperialist. Their explanation is that this is a question of human beings who sacrificed their lives and not of politics. From the cenotaph, the visitor's convoy drives away with its motorcycle escort towards Buckingham Palace. After they have left, crowds press forward to examine the wreath. Meanwhile, at the palace, Bulganin and Khrushchev have signed the visitor's book, the traditional procedure for important foreign guests coming to Britain. They are on their way to number 10 Downing Street for a brief courtesy call on the Prime Minister. This first visit only lasts about 40 minutes, a prelude to the full-scale discussions which are the main purpose of the Russian leader's journey to Britain. Discussions which may affect the whole future of the world. Sir Anthony waves goodbye to his guests. On to the Soviet Embassy in Kensington Palace Gardens, which used to be called Millionaire's Row, but nowadays has more diplomats than millionaires. Embassy families are waiting with bunches of flowers to welcome the two most important men of their country. Among the crush of embassy staff and photographers, Nikita Khrushchev pauses for a word with the Russian children who presented the flowers. The biggest event of the day at the embassy is a luncheon for Sir Anthony Eden and other British leaders. The two prime ministers are seated together and seem to be in good spirits. A conversation between Nikita Khrushchev and R.A. Butler is interrupted, but they don't appear to mind. The Chancellor of the Exchequer, Harold Macmillan, chats with the Soviet First Deputy Foreign Minister, Andrei Gromyko. Labour leader Hugh Gateskill is here, and Foreign Secretary Selwyn Lloyd with Ambassador Jakub Malik. A very happy and pleasant atmosphere, British guests commented. A good omen for the serious business to come.